So I started my morning with the exact same thing that I do every single day, which is to have a coffee. For breakfast on Saturday, I made a selection of toasted breads, bean salad, some sardines, and also tuna mayo. Tin sardines in tomato sauce on toast gives me a little bit of nostalgia because it's one of those foods that I used to eat frequently when I was younger. Lots of my friends though, they don't enjoy it. What do you think? And every Saturday we get a delivery of seasonal vegetables sent straight to us from Hatayama Organic Farm. After breakfast we went to Shibuya to do a little bit of window shopping and I couldn't walk past this adorable little Christmas pop-up store. This will be my first ever Christmas where I'm not in the UK so I'm not really sure if I should spend the money decorating my apartment or not. We then went to Aoyama Farmer's Market where we picked up some fruit and veggies. They did sell lots of other things too like bread, honey, also flowers and plants which I was quite surprised about, and street food. Then it was time for the second coffee break of the day. What can I say? I might have a problem with caffeine. We then went to Meiji Jingu Gaian, where there's a really long road of huge ginkgo trees which all turn a beautiful yellow in autumn. The trees were gorgeous, but it was incredibly busy, so maybe if you prefer quiet, natural spaces with not many people, then think about giving this one a miss. And our last stop of the day was at Mikanshi Mokita, a popular spot which is home to lots of little cute bars and restaurants. We ended up going for Vietnamese food at this restaurant called Chopsticks. The atmosphere and food were really great and you know the prices are pretty reasonable. I saw on the menu outside that they have an even cheaper lunchtime menu so I will be going back. On Sunday morning we woke up at 6am and got the train to Akigawa Valley. Sorry that I didn't record any of the journey there, but I was either half or fully asleep. Yeah, I'm not a morning person. As soon as you leave the train station though, you're surrounded with gorgeous views of the autumn leaves. And also, it's less than 60 minutes from the centre of Tokyo, so, you know, if you've just got a few days in Tokyo and you want somewhere to visit, I would highly recommend this place. And I can only imagine how gorgeous it is in spring when the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. Maybe I'll have to come next year and see. There are also lots of different types of fruit trees, like lemons, oranges, and persimmons, but it felt a little bit like Animal Crossing. <laughs> there were also lots of these places selling the fruit in little baskets, all of which were completely unattended. They just trusted that people would leave the correct amount of cash. I can't even imagine something like that happening in the UK. If I have any regrets, it's that I didn't buy any fresh yuzu. It was only 100 yen, but unfortunately I didn't bring any coins with me. There were also a lot of people camping and having barbecues, and the rising smoke from the campfires made it look even more like a Bob Ross style painting. Unlike some much fitter people, <laughs> I struggled quite a bit walking up the very steep hills, but it was worth it in the end to see all the beautiful views. If you plan on eating at any of the restaurants in the area, I would really highly suggest that you make a booking. We tried to go to this cute little sober restaurant, but unfortunately they were fully booked. We did manage to find some food and coffee at this little stand though, and it had beautiful views. And plus it was right next to a bus stop, and after over three hours of walking to get up here, I was quite happy to get the bus back to the station. <laughs> after our long day of hiking, we still decided to do a little bit of food shopping at Kitty Joji before going home. When I finally got home, it was time for, you guessed it, another coffee, so I made myself an oat milk cappuccino. I really wish that I had a proper coffee machine with a milk steamer like I used to have. Unfortunately, I don't think I've quite got the space in this apartment, but we make do with what we have. I also put a little bit of cinnamon on top and then had some ice cream because I deserve it. Then a couple of hours later, it was time to start cooking tea. Can you guess what we had? So I started by hard boiling my eggs and peeling some taro, which honestly, it always feels like I'm doing it quite dangerously. Does anyone know a better way? Then time to prepare our daikon. Then it was time to make the broth, the odin. If you hadn't already guessed, we had odin. <laughs> so I started with dashi. And I also parboiled my taro. Then to the dashi, I added sugar, sake, soy sauce, and mirin. I then took out our dashi tea bag and replaced it with daikon. I then prepared the konyaku by doing some fancy cuts because they look pretty. Also they make it have more flavour but you know, they look pretty. I did this on both sides but I forgot to record the other side.
And recently, it seems like my boyfriend's been on a mission to collect every single colour of Yebisu beer that there is. We didn't drink it all in one night, I swear. <laughs> then in go our kombu ribbons. Then put some hot water over the fish cakes just to get rid of the excess oil. Eggs, fish cakes and taro all into the pot. Then after about 15 minutes I popped in some potatoes. I really do need to buy a bigger pot, but once again we make do. And time to make some pickles with this very interesting looking carrot. I quite frequently make pickles this way and just pop them in the fridge for a couple of days so that I've always got vegetable side dishes ready to go. Today I'm using daikon and carrot, but quite frequently I use turnip, cucumbers, tomatoes, cabbage, basically any veggies that I can get my hands on and put vinegar on them. Today I'm using this vinegar which is flavoured with kombu, so the end result is a little bit different. I like experimenting. Then I just top it up with water, add some sugar and some salt. Give it a good shake and that's it, super easy. And in these next few shots, don't worry, there wasn't an earthquake, that's just me continually hitting the tripod. <laughs> and that's the end of my beautiful but tiring weekend. I hope you enjoyed, if you did please leave a like or consider subscribing. Until next time, bye!